وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In this episode بإذن الله الكريم I want to speak about Ramadan and شهر القرآن The Ramadan is the month of Quran and the strong bond and relationship between Ramadan and reciting Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم إلى آخر العالم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان Allah tells us that it was in the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was sent down so there is that bond the beginning of the Quran was in Ramadan in the great month the holy month of Ramadan and if you look at the early pious predecessors Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allah alayhim ajma'in, they understood that. And their fiqh and comprehension of the religion was that this month is the month of Qur'an and reviving the Qur'an. Walidhalika, I'm going to give you some of the Salaf and how they were in the Qur'an and how we, insha'Allah ta'ala, should be when it comes to the Qur'an in this month of Ramadan. If we have abandoned the Qur'an and we've left the Qur'an in the other months, here is an opportunity, inshaAllah ta'ala, to get ourselves into the routine of reciting the Qur'an very often and frequently. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, it was said about him that he recited the Qur'an in Ramadan, situn khatmah. 60 times that would mean he was finishing the Quran twice a day Situna khatma. he was finishing the Quran twice a day in the morning and at night this is what my beloved brothers and sisters يقرأها في غير الصلاة that wasn't the salah included يعني these recitations these two recitations per day 60 recitations in the whole entire month of Ramadan was from outside the Salah. What he prayed in the Salah was additional. قتادة ابن دعامة السدوسي رحمه الله It was said كان قتادة رحمه الله كان قتادة رحمه الله يدرس القرآن في شهر رمضان قتادة He was an individual who would teach the Quran في شهر رمضان in the month of Ramadan. So Qatada rahimahullah was an individual who would teach the people the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, and he would stop everything else and he would teach the Qur'an. Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri It was said, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَان If the month of Ramadan entered, قَالَ هِي وُسَيْ فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ تِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ وَإِطْعَامُ الطَّعَامِ That's what he would say. If Ramadan entered, Zuhri would say, إِنَّمَا هُوَ تِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ This month is the month of reciting the Qur'an. It is the month giving and feeding. And Imam Malik was said, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانِ If Ramadan entered, يَفِرُّ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْحَدِيثِ وَمُجَالَسَةُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ وَأَقْبَلَ عَلَى تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ مِنَ الْمُصْحَفِ Imam Malik, رحمه الله, was said, if the month of Ramadan entered, he will run away from reciting hadith. Yani qiraatul hadith, he will abandon it and he will leave it. And he would also run away from sitting with the people of knowledge. And what would he do? Aqbala ala tilawati al Quran min al Mus'haf. He will take a Mus'haf and he will read the Quran from it. That's what he would do. Because this is what they were. 
they were ulama who understood fadlu zamani wal makan. They knew the virtue of places and they knew the virtues of time. Yani there are times in the year where there is a particular action that is befitting for that particular timing. And that is a lot of fiqh in the religion. You're a very knowledgeable person. If you know what to do at what particular place. Yani we know that the Quran is the best dhikr. Is that not the case? The Quran is the best speech. But you're not allowed to recite the Quran in prostration, in sujood. Why? And the sujood is the time when you're the most closest to Allah. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِرَبِّهِ وَوَسَادِهِ the time when the slave is most closest to Allah is when he's in prostration, when his face is on the ground. Ponder here. Sujood is when you're most closest to Allah. And the dhikr, the Quran, is the best of dhikr. With that being said, they don't go together. So not every single action should be done at a particular time. The Quran and Ramadan are like that. They are bonded. They're stuck together. And the Salaf understood that it's not about reciting hadiths this particular month. How great it is to read hadith and how virtuous it is to read hadith and how important it is to study the religion. But they knew that this month was not that. This month was the reciting of the Quran. So Ali Imam Malik would run away from sitting with the people of knowledge. He wouldn't sit with them. He wouldn't also recite hadith. What he would do is, he would turn to reciting the Qur'an from the Mus'haf. And an Imam Malik was an alim who knew the Qur'an, but he would still read it from the Mus'haf. Sufyan al he it was, was said, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانِ If Ramadan entered, دخل, تَرَكَ He will leave off جَمِيعَ الْعِبَادَاتِ He will leave off all acts of worships. وَأَقْبَلَ عَلَى تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ And Sufyan al will turn towards the recitation of the Qur'an. Because it's the, it's, the, it's the reality of this month and the, the truth and the, the, the importance of the Quran in this particular month. Ridalika Imam Shatibiyu he says in his lines of poetry, he says, Wa he said, وَخَيْرُ جَلِيسٍ لَا يُمَلُّ حَدِيثُهُ That the Qur'an is the best thing to sit with. It's the best companion to be with. وَخَيْرُ جَلِيسٍ لَا يُمَلُّ حَدِيثُهُ And you never become bored of what it has to tell you. The Qur'an, the stories and the information and the, the waqai and the events that it wants to tell you and the rulings and the regulations. You don't get tired of hearing it. وَتَرْدَادُهُ The repetition of the Qur'an what happens? Repetition of the Qur'an increases it in beauty. The more you read the Qur'an, the more it becomes beautiful. So that's why they would read it a lot. And they would read it a lot. Here I want to stop over a little mas'ala, a little point, even though it has no uh, direct uh, relationship with the, my series. My series is not about ahkam and rulings and regulations. It's more of things that we can do and implement in our lives in this holy month of Ramadan. But there is a mas'ala that I want to go to and I want to speak about, which is, uh, an Imam al-Shafi'i, I mentioned he read the Qur'an 60 times in the month of Ramadan. And that means he would read it, he would finish the Qur'an uh, twice a day. Some of the scholars, they uh, critiqued an Imam al-Shafi'i for this. Yani, Scholars who came after, they critiqued Al Imam Shafi'i for this. And they said that this was an action that was done by Shafi'i, which it wasn't correct. And it opposes the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet. And from the people who did that was Sheikh Shu'ib Ar Ma'ud. Sheikh Shu'ib Ar Ma'ud, when he did the tahqiq of the Kitab Sira Ala Minu Bala, and he was in the Tarjama of Al Imam Shafi'i, and Al Imam Dhihabi mentions in his Siyar. That Al Imam al Shafi'i recited the Quran 60 times in the month of Ramadan. Sheikh Shu'ib al Na'ud, at the bottom of the book, he placed a footnote. And he said that this action of Al Imam al Shafi'i is in opposition, opposition to the Sunnah. And he mentioned that it opposes the statement of the Prophet where he said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, 
not to recite the Quran in less than three days. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, لا يفقه من قرأ القرآن في أقل من ثلاثة. And the Prophet said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As that he hasn't truly comprehended, a person hasn't truly comprehended uh, the Quran if he reads it in less than three days. So Sheikh, Sheikh Shu'ayb al Ra'uq pushed this and he said that Al Imam al Shafi'i's action and it is, is not in accordance to the Sunnah. So what I want to do is I want to respond to that, inshallah ta'ala, and also uh, enlighten other people for this, uh, to this answer, inshallah ta'ala. Al uh, Allama. Uh, Ibn Rajab al-Hambali has a kitab called Lata'if al-Ma'arif. Ibn Rajab al-Hambali has a kitab called Lata'if al-Ma'arif. And what Ibn Rajab did was he brought in his kitab Lata'if al-Ma'arif, uh, especially when he was talking about Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Uh, he mentions in there, Ibn Rajab, some of the statements that I just mentioned. Uh, some of these statements, Sufyan al-Thawri, al-Malik, al-Zuhri, al-Qatada, and shafii and others. He mentioned many more, uh, Ibn Rajab. After mentioning that Ibn Rajab mentioned that the prohibition of the Prophet وسلم, to Abdullah ibn Amr al-As saying to him, do not recite the Quran in less than three days, uh, Ibn Rajab says it means not to make this your norms. Yani, what is the, pro the prohibition is restricted to al mudawamat wal istimrar. Not to make this your norms and to not make this something you do all the time that you every single time you're going to finish the Qur'an in less than three days. And that's how you're always like, the prohibition applies to that. But the prohibition does not apply to, it doesn't apply to um, a person who does it in the month of Ramadan. Because the month of Ramadan is a month specific, designated for the recitation of the Qur'an. And that's the understanding of the Salaf. قَاطِبَةً يعني it, you can say it's a consensus amongst the Salaf that they used to recite the Quran in less than three days. So that's how we understand the uh, statement of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said لا يفقه من قرأ القرآن في أقل في أقل من ثلاث The same way that the Quran bonded the fasting with the uh, Quran, so did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet mentioned them together, fasting and the Quran. The Prophet والسلام, he said, That the fasting and the Quran are both going to intercede for its people the Day of Judgment. يعني fasting and reciting the Quran are both going to intercede for its people the Day of Judgment. يقول الصيام, the fasting will say, أي ربي منعته الطعام والشهوات بالنهار. The fasting will say, My Lord, I have prohibited him from eating and fulfilling his desires at day. All day, he couldn't fulfill his desires. He couldn't eat. I was the one who prevented him from it. فشفعني فيه. Oh Allah, allow me to intercede for him. ويقول القرآن, the Quran will say, The Quran will say, I prevented him from sleeping at night. And all night he was awake praying and reciting me. Oh Allah, allow me to intercede for him. And both of them are going to intercede for their people. The intercession will be accepted and granted for them. Ponder here. The Qur'an was mentioned with fasting. And that shows you the strong bond between the two. In this hadith, there's a powerful point, which is the Qur'an is something that prevents you from sleeping at night. And a person who knows the Qur'an, he's known for not sleeping the whole entire night. He's known for waking up part of the night to pray. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, ينبغي لحامل القرآن أن يعرف بليله إذا الناس نائمون. عبد الله بن مسعود he said it is it is required and it is necessary from the individual who's carrying the Quran, who's memorized the Quran, he should be known for his praying at night when the people choose to sleep. 
وَبِنَهَارِهِ إِذَا النَّاسُ مُفْطِرُونَ And he should also be known for fasting the daytime when the people are not fasting. وَبِحُزْنِهِ إِذَا النَّاسُ يَفْرَحُونَ And he should be known for his fear and his, his, his sadness when the people are laughing and joking. وَبِبُكَاءِ إِذَا النَّاسُ يَضْحَكُونَ And he's crying when the people are laughing. وَبِصَمْتِهِ إِذَا النَّاسُ يَخُوضُونَ And he's known for his silence when the people choose to indulge in speech and speak. And the person of the Qur'an is always distinct from the rest of the people. He is known for his night prayer. He's also known for his fasting daytime. He's known for, for being saddened by the religious issues and always worried and concerned about the deen when the people are laughing and, and joking. He's known for his crying when the people are laughing. He's known for his silence when the people are speaking and they're indulging into things they don't have no knowledge of. Yani the Quran, what it does to the people of the Quran is that it changes their lives. It revolutionizes their life. They become something else. It was said to a man one day, Mali la araka tanam. Why is it that I don't see you sleep at night? One of the Salaf, it was said to him, Why is it that we don't see you sleeping at night? Why are you not sleeping? Why are you always awake at night? He said, Inna ajaib al Qurani atarna nomi. That the fascinations and the amazement that is in the Quran has deprived me from my sleeping. ما أخرج من ما أخرج I do not leave من أعجوبة إلا وقعت في غيرها I don't leave one fascination and one amazement in the Quran except that it takes me to another amazing thing about it. يعني I am going through a trail of amazement one after the other. I'm taken back by one story after another story after one ruling after one statement here and there and the Quran is just amazing me that's why I can't sleep at night because they pondered over the Quran they thought over the Quran they knew the purpose of why the Quran was set down Allah tells us in the Quran kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab Allah says kitabun anzalnahu mubarakun the Quran is a book we sent down Mubarakun and it's a blessed book. And it's blessed. It's a book full of blessings. Allah says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarak liyaddabbaru ayati. So you can ponder over its verses. The Quran was sent down for pondering. Here some people may say, but if I have to finish the Quran Ramadan like Imam Shafi'i did 60 times for instance, or I finish the Quran once a day, how am I going to combine that with pondering over the Quran? How do I combine between reciting a lot and pondering over the Qur'an? That's a very strong question. That's a very good question. The answer to that question is what some of the Salaf rahimahumullah used to do. They divided their recitation, even in the month of Ramadan. And outside Ramadan, they divided their recitations. There was a recitation that they would finish consistently, yani very frequently. And there was a recitation that was ongoing and it carried on. Some of the scholars they said, answering this question, they said, Every Friday there's a khatma. And every Friday I have a khatma where I have to finish the Quran. And every Friday he's finished the Quran once. Once a week he finishes the Quran. Friday to Friday he finishes the Quran once. And every month I have one khatma. وفي كل سنة ختمة every year I have one ختمة ولي ختمة منذ ثلاثين سنة ما فرغت منها بعد and I also have a recitation that's ongoing for 30 years that I haven't still completed so that shows you there was a weekly finishing of the Quran some of the Salaf they only used to finish the Quran every seven days every week he would finish the Quran once there was also another recitation that was once a month so there was pondering over there as well, gives it more time. And then there was that yearly one, which once a year he would finish that one. He would ponder over it. And there's another one, which was 
30 years still going on and I haven't finished that one. That's the deepest, deepest tadabbur of the Quran. We all have to understand the Salaf and how they did things. Rahimahumullah. Some people now they think uh, a person's a Qari. This individual, they call him Qari. And they think Qari means he's memorized the Quran. His pronunciation and his articulation of the letters of the Quran is so good. Yeah, and he's a Qari. And so before his name, they put Qari, so and so. But being a Qari is more than that, my beloved brothers and sisters. Especially in the Itlaq al Salaf. Especially when you look at the early generation and their usage of the word. For them, a Qari was different to what we may use it as. Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he said, Wallahi ma tadabburuhu bihivd hurufihi wa idaati hududi hatta in a hadahum la yakuru karatul Qurana kulahu, ma yura lahul Qurano fi hulukin wala amali. Al Imam Hassan al Basri, he said, Wallahi, by Allah, he has not pondered on the Quran. A person who has merely memorized the letters and forsaken the rulings and the regulations in the Quran. And he's memorized the wordings, but he has forsaken the boundaries that were set by the Quran. He's forsaken it. He doesn't care. He's called a qari, and his beard, he shaves it. He smokes. He goes clubbing. And he forsaken the boundaries that were set by the Quran. In ahadahum layakulu, some of them may even say to you, Qaratu al Qurana kullahu. I read the in Quran in, in its entirety. I read the Quran in its entirety. All of it. Ma yura lahu al Quran fi kulukin wa la'amani. And the Quran cannot be seen in this person's manners and etiquettes, nor can it be seen in that person's actions. So look at the salaf. For them, tadabbur meant you memorize the wordings and you also implemented and you lived by the boundaries that were set by the Quran. That you didn't become a person who just memorized the wordings, but then whatever it's telling you, you don't understand. You're coming across verses, and those verses are actually applying to you before anyone else. You're saying, Ala la'natullahi ala zalimin. May Allah's curse be upon the oppressors. And the first oppressor here is yourself. Have you really memorized the Quran? Does memorizing the Quran only mean you memorize its wordings? Or does it mean that you've memorized its boundaries and you've understood those boundaries that you need to stay within? That's what Hassan al-Basri said. And the statement of Hassan al-Basri is still longer than that. He went into uh, more in regards to that. You can find it in the Kitab Akhlaqu Ahl al-Quran by Al-Imam al-Ajurri rahimahullah. Akhlaqu Hamalat al-Quran by Al-Imam al-Ajurri rahimahullah. So this episode, inshallah ta'ala, what I wanted to bring to light is the bond and the relationship between the Quran and fasting and how we should revive the Qur'an in this month. If the Qur'an has gathered dust, this is the month that we clear the dust of it, and we go back to it. And not only do we just recite it in Ramadan, but Ramadan becomes the starting point for an ongoing, continuous relationship between us and the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا الله استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم if you're enjoying these videos and you like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running make sure you head over to amau at home.com